parents have always fought. As a child, I grew used to it. They screamed and yelled and threw things at each other regularly. I used to lay in my bed with the pillow covering my ears, trying to drown out their voices. It got a little easier when my grandmother brought me my teddy bear. I loved that bear. I would take it everywhere with me. And when my parents fought, I could sit in my room and every time I hugged the bear, the tiny pre-recorded voice inside its chest would say, I love you, Tommy. One night, the fighting was worse than normal. The screaming was louder and the sounds of breaking glass and shattering porcelain were more violent. It was that night, clutching my favorite teddy bear, that I heard a new sound, a gunshot. A single gunshot rang through the halls of the house and everything was silent. Soon, the sound of my mother sobbing and the sound of sirens broke the silence and I let out the breath I didn't know I was holding. The police found me in my bed under the blankets, clutching my bear for dear life. After that, my life was different. I lived with my grandma for a while, but my mother was released from prison after some time and I went back to live with my mother for my teen years. It was then that strange things started happening around the neighborhood. Cats and dogs went missing, people's fences were broken, and windows were left shattered. No one really knew who was doing all of this, and no one knew how to stop them. It never really bothered me until I started noticing some discoloration on my teddy bear. I was about 14 now and did not play with that thing anymore, but it still stayed on my shelf because of the hard times it got me through. While playing with a football in the house, despite my mother's protests, I accidentally knocked it off the shelf onto the floor. It landed with a splat and I went over to investigate. It was covered with a thick red substance that now spilled onto the floor. I quickly started to clean it up, not thinking too much of it. Maybe someone spilled food on it, I thought. But I knew that couldn't have happened. To be honest, in that moment, I was scared. So I cleaned it and the floor and returned everything to its place. I jumped when I heard a firm knock at the door. I was shaken and my mother got to the door before I could gather myself to answer it. Tina, get your kid under control, my neighbor yelled angrily as soon as the door was opened. Whoa, wait, what did he do? My mom asked, startled by the other woman's sudden outburst. I found this by my broken window. Looks like someone forgot it. She held a baseball bat in one hand and waved it around. It was my baseball bat. Mom, it wasn't me, I swear. Last I knew, that bat was in the garage. Uh-huh, a likely story. The neighbor scowled at me. Thank you for telling me. I'll deal with it. You can leave the bat on the porch. My mom ended the conversation and shut the door before the neighbor could protest. After that encounter, I was thoroughly questioned about if it was me who was breaking all of the windows. I'm not sure if my mom really believed me at the time, but she did after the events of the next day. It started like any other. Breakfast, conversation, and getting ready to go to school and work. It was when we heard the screams of our neighbors that we rushed outside to see what had happened. The street was filled with dead animals, raccoons and possums, but also dogs and cats. Every missing animal in the neighborhood was now dead and in the middle of the road. Upon further inspection, we found that each animal was mutilated in a different unique way. Some had their eyes cut out, paws cut off, some were burnt to a crisp, and other horrific things. Nobody left their homes that day. We all just sat inside until the street was cleaned and the gruesome scene was gone. 
What really made me sick was when I returned to my room, the thick red goo was dripping off of my shelf and onto the floor. It was coming from the bear, and it smelled like death. I told my mom about my suspicions and showed her the scene in my room. This is a sick prank, Tommy. Your bear isn't doing any of these things. That's nonsense, she said, almost looking disgusted with me. She accused me of doing all the horrible things and blaming it on my bear. I convinced her to help me get rid of it, if just for my own comfort. She drove me to a river the next day and I threw him in. I watched the bear that was once my best friend slowly float down the stream to get washed away with the water. After that, life had almost returned to normal. Nothing out of the ordinary had happened, and the town slowly started to breathe again. I wouldn't be terrorized by that thing again until my 22nd birthday. By that time, I was renting a house and my best friend and going to college. I had a girlfriend in my own car. I was living the dream. My party had just ended. A night of drinking and games and laughing had come to a close. My friends had all just left. My roommate had gone to sleep, and I was headed to bed when the doorbell rang. Who could it be at this hour, I thought. I opened the door and was surprised to see no one there. I looked down and found a box with a note on top. Four words were scrawled on the paper with red ink. For you, happy birthday. I took the box inside and opened it up. My heart sank as soon as I laid eyes on the soaked teddy bear that sat inside the box. I reached out to touch it. Not sure if it was really there, but before I could, it spoke. I love you, Tommy. The audio coming from the bear was warped and distorted, glitching and dragging out the words. I took the box out behind the house to the dumpster and set it inside. I was not going to let this demonic toy back into my life. For the first time in a long time, I was happy. I was not going to let anything change that. I went to sleep thinking that the bear problem was over, but it was just beginning. I woke up to the smell of bacon and stumbled into the kitchen. This is why you're my best friend, I said to Brian as I took a piece of bacon off of the growing pile. You're only friends with me because I make you food, he replied with a fake frown. Oh, anyways, he continued. I wanted to ask, who got you that creepy looking teddy bear last night? I found it on the couch this morning, but I didn't remember you getting it at the party last night. That thing gives me the chills, dude. I froze in shock. It was back? No way. I had to get rid of that thing. I briefly explained the situation to my roommate before snatching the bear off the couch and driving to a landfill. I parked the car and chucked the bear as hard as I could into the dump. But when I glanced in the rearview mirror while driving back home, a little brown bear with big button eyes were staring back at me. After that, I gave up. I couldn't get rid of this thing. I guess I would have to deal with it. Weeks passed, and I thought maybe it wouldn't be a problem. Nothing had happened so far. Until I walked into the apartment to find Brian knocked out on the floor, the fluffy figure standing over him. The bear wasn't moving. In fact, I had never seen it move, but I felt like I had caught it in the act. A broken vase from one of the high shelves lay broken on the floor next to my friend. I rushed him to the hospital to find out that he had suffered a mild concussion. He said he guessed that the vase had fallen on him while he was walking under it. He didn't necessarily believe me when I suggested it was the bear. It's creepy, but there's no way it threw a vase at me. That's just crazy, he stated. His words made sense. It had been the wrong place at the wrong time. But 
What if it was the bear? I shook the thought from my mind. That was crazy, right? I was wary about the toy for the next few days, checking to make sure it hadn't moved, and keeping it away from people when they came over became a habit. It was one day when I had fallen asleep while watching a movie with my girlfriend that the nightmare began again. I was jolted from my sleep by a shrill high-pitched screech. I ran across the room to the source, but I was too late. My girlfriend lay still on the wooden floor, eyes and mouth opened in a scream. With a bloody hole in her chest, a kitchen knife covered in blood lay a few feet away from the corpse, right next to the innocent looking stuffed animal. I grabbed the knife quickly away from the toy expecting it to try to beat me to it, but it just sat there, lifeless. I tried to keep the tears from clouding my vision as I raised the knife and plunged it down towards the bear. The bear then did something I had never seen it do before. It moved. My roommate walked in right as the knife missed the bear and stuck in my dead girlfriend's torso. He slammed the door shut immediately and I could hear him calling the police in the other room. There was no way out of this. No one will ever believe me. I sat on the floor next to my dead love and cried. I sobbed until the police came to take me away. I tried to tell the police that it wasn't me. It was the bear. But that just got me sent to the psychiatric ward of the prison. The doctors tell me that I projected my actions onto the bear, that I was responsible for everything that it did, even when I was a kid. They tell me that I'm mentally unstable and a danger to others. I don't believe a word they say. That thing has a mind of its own, and that mind is incredibly twisted. Now, I live each day in my padded cell. It's not too terrible, I guess. The food isn't great, and I'm not a fan of the isolation, but at least that thing can't get to me in here. At least, that was what I thought. I got an anonymous package today. Security checked it and said I could receive it. I can see a tuft of brown fur sticking out of the package, and I'm terrified to open it.